Well, I'm out here scouting. I'm at the second piece of the day now. I'm right off the parking lot. Park, my car is literally 40 yards away. And I got all this stuff right here by the parking lot. It's like some honeysuckle underbrush. There's a couple locust trees in there. This is like a little mini sanctuary right by the parking lot. This is one of those spots that I'll probably get overlooked. I'm gonna go in here deeper and scout out the area that I want to originally, but I'm gonna poke in this stuff when I get back and I'm guaranteeing I'm gonna see a lot of deer sign because everybody's walking in this two track trail right on past all this stuff. It's gonna be money, I already know. All right, well, I had this spot marked as a spot I wanted to scout because I got fields up top here and then I got field up top right in there. And I'm kind of in a, a bottleneck pinch in between both these fields. I thought it might have some more signs, some cruising sign, some of that rut time period sign. So I figured there'd be some rubs and some good rub lines, maybe a scrape or two here and there. But I'm really not seeing anything. So that's a big part of scouting is to get in here and check out these spots that you e-scout and really putting a big x on the map as a spot not to hunt is almost just as good as finding a good spot to hunt because now i can really i can block out a huge chunk of this piece as just saying not good no deer sign and you know that you know that just narrows down your spots that are good all right so i found a decent spot finally um and i started looking around for a tree and you wouldn't you know it i look up and I find a tree stand. So actually I'm looking at this stand and it's actually got some rusty spots on it. Someone must've got a rabbit. It's got some rusty spots on it. It's got an old tree hook in there that's actually kind of starting to grow into the tree. So I don't think anybody's hunting it, you know. So if you find stands on public, don't ride off the spot necessarily. Check out the stand and see if someone's been hunting it. Cause people will hang these cheap $40 hang-ons on public and then they'll just abandon them and never go back to them for years because they'll come here and hunt two or three times and not have any luck. So I'm still going to mark this spot. I actually think I need to go back a little bit deeper, but I'll still mark it. We're about to do. We're about to scout. We're about to walk about 12 miles. Not find any sheds. Probably not find any deer sign either. <laughs> but we're just out here having a blast. <laughs> What's the goal though? Like what are we e-scouted going into this? Oh yeah, we uh, so we got this piece that's kind of landlocked. You either got across a pretty wide creek, um, which is not walkable, or you have to access it from very far away, which is what we're about to do now. Um, so we're, it should be good because it's pretty landlocked. Um, we are on a pinch of this private cornfield actually. We're on the public just a little bit. Hammer trails heading into the cornfield. We catch actually a, a big track. A couple of them. Bring it up in here to this kind of cedar thicket. You got a big rub there, big rub here. Multiple old rubs, historic rubs. All these trees have gotten rubs over the years. So we'll definitely mark a tree in here. And the access isn't too bad actually to get here. So, good spot. We're at a lot of, uh, literally, lot of we're gonna hunt right here. A lot of rubs behind there. Bunch of rubs transition up here, but this looks like it could be the heart of the bedding area. Yeah. You're gonna shoot a deer right in the chest at like five yards. Yep. Dick, give me a breakdown, dude. Byron just walked right up on this guy. Look at this kind of habitat. Can't see five yards, but we're gonna kill him in here. Good mass. We were it's just talking. Older deer. Just kind of funky rack. You broke off. Who knows how long that would have been. Well, and, and, and talk about what we just saw out there is, is we thought we might be able to kill them on some oaks early, early year. Yeah, we got the transition line between this cedar brush, uh, cedar thicket, and some hardwoods uh, that lead down to the creek. But there was a lot of oaks right there in them hardwoods, and we marked a couple trees actually right there. But it um, looks like we might need to try to fiddle our way in here to this thicket somehow and find a tree. So that's what we're going to do now. This dicky mo stand. <laughs> Well, as you can see, there was some wooden steps. You got tired of that. Said, screw that noise. Give me a nice solid ladder here. Need some, need some, need a bow rope. Just get through some bales of hay tied together. Hoist your bow right up there. And what you want to do for maximum performance, 
for maximum strength. You ratchet the tree stand down and up. Get you some good old angle iron, just throw some bolts <laughs> in it. A little piece of plywood. It doesn't need to be marine grade, just whatever plywood you want to. Just slap it right on some angle iron. Ratchet that bad boy to the tree. Remember, up and down, and you're good to go. It is a vintage tree seat, though. That, yeah, I am jealous of. 